In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how the runoff curve number tool works. To demonstrate the runoff curve number tool, I'll use Pond Builder. At this point in time in Pond Builder, I've drawn in my dam, I've drawn in my watershed, and I've drawn in my flow lines, and now it's time to assign a runoff curve number to this watershed. There are two methods I can use to assign a runoff curve number. In either case, I start by clicking on the runoff curve number icon in my left hand toolbox. When I click on it, I get a pop up box that says, Do you know what number you want to assign to the watershed or do you want to calculate your own? I'm going to say for this case, I know what one I want to assign and I'll click in a 75. That's only if I know what my runoff curve number is. However, if I don't know a runoff curve number, Again, I'll start by clicking on the runoff curve number icon. I get the little menu that says, do you know what a run, your runoff curve number is? If I don't know what it is, then I click no. And you'll see that there's a couple extra icons that pop up in my toolbox. There's this assign hydrologic soil units, cut land cover, assign land cover, and reset land cover. These are the four icons that I'll need to generate a runoff curve number. I always want to start by assigning the soil um, hydrologic group, so I'll click on that icon, and the uh, colored soil survey will, will begin to appear in my view, and inside this colored soil survey, I have my watershed, and inside my watershed, I have a certain number of soils that are automatically assigned. There's only one class of hydrologic groups. Uh, that is given for these soil types and they're automatically colored in. So in this case, most of my watershed is this gray color, which is the B group. Now I also have some white polygons. And these white polygons mean I have a choice that I have to make on the hydrologic group. So I'll simply left click on the white polygon and I'll get a pop-up box that says, okay, the choices that you can assign are either B or D. And so with knowledge of the landscape and the watershed, I'm going to assign that polygon B. Then I'm going to go to my next white polygon. I'm going to left click again, and I'm going to assign this one to D. At this point in time, I have all my soils assigned to a hydrologic group in my watershed, and I'm going to move to my land covers. I'm going to do that by clicking on my cut land cover, and the program will automatically take me back to the aerial view of my watershed. And it will activate a cut tool, uh, like all GIS tools. And so I'm going to start by cutting out the, the different uh, soil, or I'm sorry, the different um, land covers for this watershed. There's really three different land covers in this watershed. I have the road, it's a gravel road. I have a little bit of a farmstead, but mostly I have corn and soybean uh, row crop. So I'm going to start in this case by cutting out the road and I'm going to start outside of the watershed and I'm going to move through the watershed and I'm going to cut outside the other side of the watershed. Once I get to that location I double click. In order to cut I have to cut across either two watershed boundaries or a watershed boundary and another cut line. So again I'm going to cut out the other side of the road by starting outside of the watershed I'm going to cut all the way through the watershed and through the other end of the watershed. I'm going to double click and that will apply my cut line. So I have one cut line on either side of the road. Next I need to cut out the farmstead. So I'm going to start outside of the watershed and I'm going to cut across one of the road cuts that I made earlier. So when I get to the middle of my road, I'm going to double click and it's going to apply a cut to cut out that little bit of a farmstead. So now I have my different land uses cut out for this watershed. Obviously it's a pretty simple watershed when it comes to land uses. The next step will be to assign the polygons or the different land uses that I cut out. So I do that by clicking on the assign land cover. <coughs> when I do this it activates a menu. So when I move back to my aerial view and I click on any one polygon that's been cut out, I'll get a menu that drops down and I just need to move through my menu until I get to the land use that I want to assign. And in this case I'm going to assign that it's contoured crop residue cover good. I'm going to assign the same thing to the other side of the road. 
Again, this takes user knowledge of the watershed. Then I have the um, farmstead that I need to assign. So I'm going to click on my polygon of my farmstead. And I'm going to move down to my list until I get to my farmstead. Then lastly, I have the road in the middle. And I said that that was a gravel road. So I'm going to move on down to the impervious areas. Streets, road, gravel, plus right away. So now I have all my land cover calculated and the program now in the background is calculating the soil hydrologic groups and the land cover and it's creating a runoff curve number for me. If at any time I've made a mistake on my hydrologic soil groups or on my land covers, I can simply click on reset and it will reset the entire watershed uh, back to no hydrologic groups or no land covers and I can begin the process over.